Welcome to the Metro Board of Zoning Appeals meeting, which is now in session regularly scheduled meeting for November 3rd, 2022. At this time, I would like to ask everyone to either turn off or silence your cell phone. My name is Elizabeth Waits. I'm a member of the code staff, and I'll be introducing the cases that are in public hearing today, representing the board with maps, photos, and proposed site plans for each of the subject properties. The information I present as well as the applications, recommendations from other government agencies, and any letters we've received from the public in support or opposition to each request have been provided to the board members for review in advance of today's meetings. A couple of preliminary announcements. We have two cases on our docket which have been deferred. Case number 2022-141 is being deferred to December 1st. Case number 2022-143 is being deferred to November 17th. I'm going to read the captions for those cases very quickly. Case 2022-141 was a request for a special exception for an adaptive residential development at 5100 Delaware Avenue. Case 2022-143 is a request for a variance from the side setback requirements for property located at 1042 Scoville Street zoned RS5. If anybody's here for either one of those two cases, they're being deferred. Um, again, the uh, case 20, uh, 22, 141, the one on Delaware is being deferred two meetings to December 1st, the one on... Elizabeth? Yes. It, it, our docket says 11-17, which is today. Yeah, I think that we got notice just yesterday that they were asking to actually defer it one more time. Okay. And then on 143, that's the one on Scoville, and it's being deferred one meeting to the 17th. And so for anybody who was here on those cases, please note that those meetings are not going to be taking place at this location. Those meetings are going to be taking place at our regular location, which is the Sunny West Conference Room. It's located at 700 Second Avenue South. And um, if you're familiar with the main office for the county clerk and where they're doing early voting, that's the conference room we'll, where those meetings will take place. So please take note of that. Um, in regards to uh, the board's proposed consent agenda, in preparation for today's meeting, the board staff has recommended a consent agenda and the chair has reviewed those cases. Um, I will co call through the two items that are on the consent agenda just to ensure if anyone is here um, wishing to speak in opposition to those cases. If not, I'll ask the board to approve these two items. I'm sorry, my mic is a little loud. It's all right. Okay. You can hear you up nice and clear. <laughs> no muttering it's under better than the under. better than the alternative. <laughs> uh, okay, case 2022-137. This is a request uh, for a daycare center on a 3.92 acre site located at 1022 South Gray Croft Avenue, zoned RS20. Is there anybody here that was wanting to speak in opposition to this request for a daycare center on, on South Graycroft? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Chair. We also have proposed for consent today, case 2022-140. This is a request for a variance from the street setback requirement for, a re uh, for property located at 2128 Burn Street, zoned R6. Was there anybody here that was hoping to speak against the variance on Burns? Okay. Seeing none, if I could ask the board to... Make a motion um, to approve. Thank you. Second it. There's a motion to put approve those two cases being on the consent agenda. Second. Yep. Second. Okay. All in favor. Can we oh. just make one, one yep. comment? Was that the case... There's a discussion. It's just a comment mm -hmm. that the case 20, uh, 22137 was a case that was heard two years ago and approved by the board. So I think that's a good reason not to hear it because it was already approved. Just a comment. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, any further discussion? All right, all in favor of that motion, say aye. aye. Any opposed? None. Okay, that passes. Okay, thank you. 
Um, for the appellants who just had their items approved on consent, you're free to go unless you'd like to stay. It's a public meeting and you're welcome to, but please note that our staff will be sending you a copy of the order from today's proceedings and you'll have two years from, uh, from the entry of that order to be able to finalize your building permit application. So please reach out to our staff if you have any questions about that. I don't believe I see any council members present, Mr. Chair. Um, am I mistaken about that? I don't, I don't see any. Okay. Just wanted to check on that really quickly. Um, for the remaining items on our agenda today, we're about to start calling through the public hearing docket. For contested matters, in other words, items that have people here to speak both for and against the application, each side will have 10 minutes in total to make a presentation. So, for instance, if you're a neighborhood group or um, uh, individuals, you know, who've come to as a group or perhaps not as a group, but just have come to speak against one of the applications and just please note that you all have an aggregate of 10 minutes to make your presentation. And for the applicant, um, you are more than welcome to reserve some of your time of the 10 minutes to make your presentation in order to respond or rebut any of the comments that are made during the opposition testimony. After the close of each public hearing, the board will discuss the case and take a vote. The Metropolitan Code of Laws requires four votes to grant an application. Once a vote's taken on your application, a party who disagrees with the outcome may request a rehearing within 60 days. Parties may also appeal the decision to the Davidson County Chancery Court by filing a writ of certiorari within 60 days. All parties are encouraged to seek independent legal counsel before filing an appeal to ensure that all deadlines and procedures are followed. Um, for the items that are about to be on public hearing, then again, I would just remind our applicants that if your application's granted today, then we'll send you a copy of the order and then you'll have two years from that date to be able to complete your building permit application. So once the item is called up, the applicants will come forward to this table here and have a seat, make your presentation to the board, and we'll let you know when your time is up. And if there's any parties um, who are present to speak um, in opposition to your request, then we will uh, you will sit, take a seat back and then we'll ask them to come forward um, and uh, just approach the hearing in that manner. So at this time, I'll go ahead and... Start the first item on public hearing today. This is case 2022-139. This is a request for a variance from the rear setback requirement for a property located at 4102 Kimbart Drive, zoned R10. The rear setback requirement is 20 feet and the applicant is seeking a reduction to 13 feet. Here we have a copy of the zoning map. Again, it's R10 zoning. Here's the aerial view of this neighborhood and some street views of the home. This is the streetscape, and then down below, um, we've added a close-up of the aerial photo of the rear of the lot since we weren't able to actually get a shot of that when we visited the property and here is the site plan that's been submitted by the applicant. So if I could please ask the applicant for 4102 Kim Bark to please come forward at this time. And is there anyone here wishing to speak? If you may have a seat here. Is there anyone here who's wishing to speak against this case? Okay, then sir, you'll have five minutes to make your presentation. Sure, yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yep, can you hear Hi. Me? Uh, good afternoon. So uh, I am Jared Lindheim. I'm one of the uh, the homeowners for 4102 Kimbark. Is, uh, is that your address for the that, record? Okay. Yes, that's our address. Right. Yep. Um, so we have a, uh, obviously our back uh, patio is not enclosed. Uh, a majority of the homes that are located there uh, do have an enclosed um, patio. The, uh, the home next to us um, that is... Uh, doesn't comply. I think they got a variance uh, about two years ago, from what we understand, uh, and they do have an enclosed patio. Uh, we do have a one-year-old who is uh, who was uh, who, had, who got meningitis about when he was three months old. So his health is obviously our top concern. Uh, we, based on where we're located and the two uh, adjacent houses, there's a ton of brush. Uh, outside, and it makes it quite difficult, especially during the warmer months, to uh, to enjoy and actually be outside without issues with mosquitoes and, and a lot of other wildlife uh, aspects. And so, uh, it became a bit of a priority uh, for us to uh, to see if we could uh, to move something forward in order for us to have a little bit more of a uh, 
you know, a comfort with being outside and actually being able to enjoy it with our, uh, with our son. The, uh, the other thing is looking through, um, and I just have my list here in terms of, uh, the hardships, um, we, we don't feel that it's self-imposed and, um, you know, we feel as though just given the, the way the property lays out, um, as well as the fact that others have it in the area is that it, it is not self-imposed. Uh, there is no, we, the way we look at it is it's not much of a financial gain. Um, that's really not the only reason we're looking at it whatsoever. It's merely for uh, our enjoyment, uh, and protection for our child. And we don't feel that there's any, uh, injury to the neighboring property and no harm to the public welfare, uh, which made us feel, um, you know, confident to, uh, to submit for the variance. Um, but I think that probably covers and summarizes what we're looking to do. Again, nothing uh, too extreme, merely just to look uh, to enclose um, the area in the back, uh, similar to what our neighbors did at uh, 4100. So you're looking to enclose an existing patio? Yes. So I, I actually have a picture. I'm sorry you guys weren't able to get um, anything. I don't know if it's worth showing to you all, but there is an existing uh, concrete structure that's out there that already exists. When you walk outside, it would merely just be to cover that um, what already exists out there. But it would, just, it would be screened in, so you wouldn't you wouldn't like ever want to put walls and make it conditioned space of the house. No, it, we would just look to put some screens and then obviously a roof, nothing, okay. you know, more permanent, just kind of uh, an ability to go out and, and sit out there. Any more questions from the applicant? Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Thank you, and we'll discuss. The lot, lot is oddly shaped. I don't that image isn't up right now, but it was. Yeah, I up can't early. tell. I can't tell that it's. Yeah, I think in our packet it, it shows it shows that kind of very. So they, even the, the other house on the same lot has a much deeper, deeper back backyard kind of than he does. And actually, I know this area well. I mean, every 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 house along the street has been kind of torn down and rebuilt in the last ten years or so, and and. This one is probably the, the least deep of any of the lots, especially with that angle. So, um, I'm trying to find that. I think the I think one of those diagrams showed it. I, yeah, I haven't been able to it's in our packet. It's kind of. Right. Yeah. Do you see yeah. it right here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I believe there's a valid hardship with the odd shaped lot, and unless anyone else. Has anything to say? I'll make a motion to approve the variance request based second. on the odd shape lot. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor of approving the application? So, any opposed? Okay, that passes 5 0. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your days. I didn't ask my magic tree question. All right, it's more important than the tree this <laughs> time. Um, hey, yes. Do you have a question? No. Okay. No, yes. Oh. And just, just for the record um, on that one, Mr. Chair, since we had one member who wasn't present during the hearing, I think our record might reflect that it was um, a vote of four to zero, but in any event. Oh, I'm sorry, five to zero, and we have six. No, okay. I was aware. I didn't, <laughs> Thank I didn't you. Count. You caught that already. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so don't mind me on that. Case 2022-142 is a request for a variance from the street and side setback requirements for property located at 1618 11th Avenue North, zoned RS5. The applicant is seeking a reduction of the street setback from 20 feet to 14 and is also seeking an increase of the side setback from 3 feet to 5 feet because otherwise um, there's a 3-foot side setback requirement for parcels that don't meet the minimum lot area for their zone district. Um, this subject parcels approximately 3,750 square feet in a district that requires a minimum lot area of 5,000. That's a built-to line that they're trying to get away from? Okay. Exactly. Yes, that's a side setback issue. And then, of course, with the front setback, we're going, um, the request is from 20 to 14. So here is the map of this area. And zoning is RS5. Here's our aerial view. And this is what the lot looks like at this time, and as well as the streetscape in the area. 
And here is the site plan submitted by this applicant. Um, is there anyone here to speak in opposition to this request? Okay, you're here to speak in favor of the request. Okay, great. If you would come forward, please. You'll have five minutes to make your presentation. Please state your name and address um, to the board whenever you get started. Thanks. Hello, my name is Melanie Harris. My address is 1620 11th Avenue North, and I own 1618 11th Avenue North. Um, so at 1620, we have five-foot setbacks. I just want to do a five-foot setback so that I can put my plans on and build in that house. I want to actually build and move right there. Um, the front setback, the reason I'm asking for the variance is because what I was told by the surveyors and how it used to be is they grandfather, so they did an average. The way our the whole street is made, it's very odd shaped. So nobody's lots on that street are that deep, except for when you get closer down towards the interstate, their lots become a little deeper and longer. Ours are very short and it's odd shaped. So if I have to stick to these, it's gonna be very hard to build on that lot. So I'm just asking for the variance so that I can build my house. Okay, any um, looking at your so this is this is what you're proposing to build, ma'am, is that correct? And so you're uh, you're wanting to go to five feet on the side and then to uh, you're wanting to go from three feet to five feet. There's it's right, got from three feet right, right now. Two five so an increase in side away. back and then you want a, a reduction from twenty to fourteen in the front. And so the three feet do you need the reduction? In, I'm looking. Um, why is it you need the reduction in the front? That's what I'm. I see. I, I, I'm with you. I think more on the side. So I need the reduction in the front because, of course, there's not a lot in the back either. So we're doing the 20 foot in the back. So okay. So you're meeting the rear setback. Okay. I, I follow you now. All right. Yeah. And I guess it, that's just really that one corner of the house is the only one that kind of. Had that I mean, it looks like one side of your house is going to be about 20 foot back because of the angle of the lot. Is that why you're kind of having to try to push that forward a little bit? Yes. Okay. Okay. Any further questions for the app from the applicant for the applicant? Okay. We'll close the public hearing and discuss. Um, I mean, it, it seems like there is an irregular lot shape here. And I think it's it's you know it, it, I think what well, factor is part of in, in my mind is only only a portion of it will be kind of at that 14 feet. Most of it will be further back from there. Um, and I, the, the house, just looking at the footprint of the house, it seems like a reason. It's not like they're trying to overbuild the lot. You know, I think sometimes I worry about you know encroaching on front setbacks to just try and make the house bigger, but it seems like a normal sized house here. It's not like it's a McMansion or anything going there. Um, so I'd be inclined to support a motion based on the regularity of the lot. Especially compared to some of the other lots. As you said, they get, they get bigger. Right. They, they get, get deeper. Down, which and, is, yeah. Um, yeah. And I, and Mr. Mr. Lawless, um, made a point of, um, in my year. <laughs> about uh You're supposed to you were well, supposed to be on your best behavior. Well, you know, it's it's uh, I had yeah, I had a milkshake for lunch, so what can I say? Um but uh I, I think that um he, he mentioned could you turn it on the lot and, and I think that would be more out of place on the street because you know you'd be you'd be out of the out of the kind of it would it would look strange as far as pedestrians walking along the street or approaching the house. Well, she's already on that on that main, on that back yeah. setback, um, and I know one neighbor had uh, had had some concern about the rear because that's what's used for parking. That alley back there is what's used for. Um, there's an alley in, in the in the rear of the property that's used for what'd she say, uh, like trash pickup and all that kind of stuff. So she was more concerned, I think, about about moving it back, which is not part of what this is involves. Um, <laughs> Made the comment if you made it bigger print, you could pre probably read it. Yeah, I think somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, but kind of, you know, to Mr. Wallace's point, 
there's different ways to orient this plane in the mm -hmm. field area to be confronted that. But to uh, remember Newton's point, we've seen cases where they're trying to overbuild a lot or jam a lot of building on the site. And that's, that's not the case here. That's not. Yeah. So it's more sort of reuse typical planes on a I think you should, Mr. Cole just satisfied my question. I was a little concerned with, I like the continuity of houses being in line with each other in a neighborhood, but it doesn't seem like if the rest of the neighborhood is irregularly shaped and they're all kind of orienting different in order to fit into these irregular shaped lots, then it, I, I agree, it's not like self-imposed. She's not overbuilding. It's just mm -hmm. the shape of the lot that forced her to make this request. So. It's not like Legos where they all have to be a particular way. Well, okay. Does anybody have a motion then? Sounds like there's a... Well, I guess... The, the hardship yeah. I think you've established is... Well, can I, I think... Can, can I reopen the public hearing to sure. to ask her one question? Does anybody... Let me ask. Does anybody have an objection to reopen the public hearing? Okay. Yeah, we can reopen it. So, um, and I just... I, I can't tell based on, on the, the little snip we have up there in our packet, but are the houses kind of... Will, you, will your house orient kind of be in the same line, you know, with the rest up. of the houses on the street? It will line okay. up with the two. Okay. Next to, because they all kind of... They all, they all align with the lot lines rather than with the street angle. Right, they yeah. stagger. Some okay, of them are gotcha. further up and from further back. They okay. stagger. Sounds good. Well, but it, well, know, the one next to it, yeah. That was my one, <laughs> that was why I asked the question. Right. Just to say, well, um, I mean, they're not building a monster house. No. no. Oh, that was the only question I had. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. And, uh, do you have a motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the, the variance as requested due, the, due to the irregular lot shape um, for this lot. Okay. There's a motion. And there's a second. Is there any further discussion? Okay. All in favor of the motion? Say aye. Any opposed? Okay. That passes 6 0. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. I think the other um, the other persons here are actually observing um, for just anticipation for a hearing that they're having next time. So I believe okay. that that concludes our docket. And um, if it's okay with the chair, then yeah, we'll I, entertain a motion to adjourn. I compliment you on your stellar <laughs> job. It, it wasn't me. <laughs> it was pure luck, Mr. Law. <laughs> I just have the the cards were dealt. When they were just having to be a light Take the light top deal. Look I, I feel like Take they're very efficient. efficient. I, should <laughs> I should caution that the next meeting will not. Yeah, yeah it's so going to be probably going to be. We're going to have a larger dog in there. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Uh, second. <laughs> All in favor? Yeah. Okay, we're adjourned. That reminds me. Jobs, have you really? This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.